when I first saw the product listings of this watch, the first thing that popped into my mind was, well, this is a good looking chronograph, I think I should get it in for review. But then I saw the deal du jour price of 52 bucks, which definitely helped to speed up my decision making process, because at least on paper this watch specifications don't even closely match such a ridiculously low price tag. But that is of course on paper. Is it the same in reality? Well, we have it here. Let's find out. Hello and welcome back. So yes, I ended up buying this Pagani Design Chronograph. The 52 bucks price tag definitely made it much easier. And of course, if by the end of this review you want to pick one for yourself, I will leave all the links to the product listings in the description of this video. So once I unpacked a very familiar by now packaging, I must admit my first impressions were pretty good. We have a full stainless steel case and bracelet construction, a fully functional Japanese Seiko Mecha Quartz movement and actually a really good looking dial. So, so far so good, nothing obvious indicating that some serious corners were cut to get to such a competitive price. Which only meant one thing, that I will definitely will need to dig deeper and do more detailed examinations. So, starting with the design, this is actually not as clear cut as might look at the first glance. As a matter of fact, I came to somewhat disturbing conclusion here as I was doing a deeper dive in my research. I know that at arm's length, so to speak, it resembles Langin's Spirit Chronograph. However, looking at it in more details, and we can clearly see that apart maybe from somewhat similar case shape and similar three sub dial layout, there are too many things that are not the same. Starting from the extra button at around 10 o'clock on non jeans, different font for our markers. Actually, some our markers on non jeans are not even there. Very different crystal, which I will talk about in more details later. And the list goes on. After a bit more searching on the interweb, I came up with this Breitling chronograph, Premier B01, which again kinda resembles this Pagani design watch, but again only in generic terms. Even the number of subdials is different. So, in short, I know this might come as a bit of a shock, but it looks like we're dealing with a kind of original design here, which, fair to say, was inspired by some vintage timepieces, but original nevertheless. But if by any chance I missed some obvious watch that Pagani Design did clamage here, well then do please let us know in the comments, I will be very interested to read that. And yes, of course, this Pagani Design is available in more than one colorway. This salmon color dial, which I think is very attractive, and the black dial with H patina, our numerals, which emphasizes the vintage style of this watch and is very good looking in my opinion too. So, going through the dimensions, we have a 38mm case diameter, the case height is 13mm and we have 20mm lugs here, so this watch is a real strap dialing. Lug to lug is very well managed measuring at 44.8mm, which means that this chronograph should be suitable for pretty much most resizes, starting comfortably from 5 and 3 quarters of an inch and up. Although, there is a small but important caveat to that and I will come to it when we examine the bracelet. Now, talking about the bracelet, it has a subtle taper down to 18mm at the clasp and as supplied should comfortably cover wrists up to 8.5 inches or 21.5 cm in circumference. And this watch weighs 136 grams and 121 grams after adjusting it to my about 7 inch wrist. The finishing on the case is very good and consistent. Starting from the top of the case, we can observe the interplay of mirror polished and brushed surfaces, with high polished top of the fixed bezel, brushed sides of the bezel and top of the case, which then followed by the high polished chamfers that run along the flanks of the case. All this creates a very interesting design, which in combination with the distortion on the sapphire crystal makes this watch head look like some kind of intricate vintage optical instrument. The sides of the case are also brushed, which will of course, among other benefits, reduce the visibility of potential scratches. In line with the vintage aesthetics, we have no crown guards, the chronograph movement is operated by two piston pushes and we have a signed screw down crown with comfortable grip and nice conical shape towards the case. Flipping the case around and we have brushed a screw on case back with specifications on the perimeter. 
I like that the case back is fairly flat and together with the well slanted down lugs allows for a comfortable wrist fit despite the case somewhat prominent height of 13 mm. Now, Pagani Design declared 100 meters of water resistance here, which in theory assumes even swimming. My guess is that they felt quite optimistic having a screw on case back and screw down crown. However, with the piston pushers that don't have screw down nuts, I would exercise caution and I would definitely avoid swimming in this chronograph. We have here a single domed sapphire crystal, hence that interesting distortion at an acute viewing angles. I like this choice of crystal shape, I think it works very well with the style of this watch. I'm not too sure how much anti-reflective coating here though, however, because of good contrast on the dial, this watch remains legible at most positions anyway. In regards to the movement, Pagani Design deployed here trusted Japanese Seiko Mecha Quartz caliber VK63, which means we have a mechanical chronograph module integrated with the quartz movement, giving us the best of both worlds, so to speak. A smooth swipe of chronograph second hand and an accuracy and dependability of quartz, with the battery lasting up to three years. The dial is done really well here. As I discussed earlier, it kind of borrows various elements from different brands and the result is, I think, a very good looking watch. First, the dial has a multi-layered design or something we call a sandwich dial. The Arabic hour numerals cutouts are done in cursive font, which I think suits this watch very well. We have a really nice sunburst effect on the main dial as well as on the subdials. The subdials are slightly recessed and have an intricate concentric pattern, which creates this very interesting light play. I must say that this is one of those dials that can either entertain you with a complex sunburst pattern or just turn subdued dark blue, which is pretty cool and definitely not something I would expect to see on a $50 watch. The minute track is printed on yet another layer on the dial and has a very thin and elegant high polished border separating it from the main dial background. Pretty cool attention to detail. The pencil style hands are well proportioned and stretch elegantly to the edge of the dial. No complaints here. And we have a date window that Pagani Design snuck at half past four position. I guess we could have a discussion if it was really necessary, however, I like the practicality of having the date complete and it kind of blends with the white hour indices, so it is not too obtrusive on the dial. And of course, we need to look at the loom. Well, it is bright initially, however, as you can see, it fades away pretty quickly. To be frank, not the best performance, however, taking into account that this is a dress watch and it cost a smidge over 50 bucks, I'm not going to judge it very harshly here. And before we get to the verdict, let's take a look at the bracelet. And if this bracelet looks familiar, well, it is because if you follow my channel, you probably saw this bracelet on the GMT watch that I reviewed recently. And I was actually critical of this bracelet in that video. However, first, this watch is considerably more affordable. And second, the integration between the lugs and the end links on this watch is actually done noticeably better. Which leads me to believe that this bracelet was initially designed for this watch in the first place. So, we have inverted end links here. The end links and the links are made out of solid stainless steel. Links are connected by pins, which is perfectly acceptable at this price point. And the links finishing is decent too. The bracelet has predominantly brushed finish on top with high polished inserts and high polished sides. We have double pusher folding clasp with a milled scissor mechanism. The clasp is signed. It is also very robust in operation and it has three well spaced macro adjustments. And again, while I was critical of this clasp on a $200 watch, I think it is perfectly fine on a timepiece priced at 50 bucks. Ok, one thing I will need to point out here though is that caveat that I mentioned earlier in the video, that is, the limited number of removable links. Which means that if your wrist is slimmer than about six and a quarter of an inch, you might not be able to achieve a tight fit. If you are not after a tight fit, then it is not a problem and of course there is always an option of putting this watch on a leather strap or on a NATO style strap like this one that was coincidentally included in the package with this watch. So not a big problem, but something to be aware of nevertheless. So, what's my verdict? Well, yes, the loom is a bit lackluster, but to be honest, I am quite surprised by this watch. We have a very interesting and arguably original design here with a very good quality of execution and materials, which 
frankly just doesn't match up with the $52 price tag of this watch at the time of making this video. What are your thoughts? Well, do let us know in the comments. And for more cool and affordable watch reviews, click my link over here. It is chosen by YouTube algorithm, I believe, specifically for you. And of course, don't forget to smash that like button. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, thank you for watching. Take care. And I will see you in the next video.